life with God is so good. So come join us on this fun life where we put God in the center of everything. Hey everybody, it's Live with Gwen and Joe. I'm sitting here with my beautiful wife, Gwen, and we're going to read a little bit out of Deuteronomy 8, verse 6. It says, uh, Observe the commandments of the Lord your God, walking in His ways and revering Him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. That's so cool. Amazing. Too. Everything, just everything that could possibly need is supplied. And so what we were talking about is the amazing, like, uh, blessings from obedience is what that's talking about. And we're experiencing that. I mean, just look behind us. Okay, so we have a garden here, and the garden has produced amazing things this year, and it happens quickly. It's mm -hmm. We it's have nice. baskets of, of fresh tomatoes and so many cucumbers. It's it's a bountiful blessing. It's right out of the wrong me. And it, it, it says it says if you observe it and you revere God, He's going to bless you. Yes. I am so big on that because I'm still like, oh, we could fix everything. And he just, he, so the, the word wording, you know, in the Bible is all, all the commands. So that's a necessary component. But you wonder why, you know, if you feel like, oh, I'm not getting blessed. I mean, you've got to lay down that sin and then you've got to um, observe. And observe isn't just, looking at it, but it's actually doing it. You know, it's not an observation of the eyes, it's an observing of the commands and doing it. And that's the difference, is people like to look at it, hear about it on a, on a Sabbath uh, day, Lord's Day, but they, they're not wanting to actually do it, but they want the blessings. The physical produce of the garden is actually kind of a metaphor for the garden of your life. And you start talking about uh, being obedient and, and uh, paying attention to, to God's laws and, and getting under authority and things like that. And it worked in my life. And, and I, I, I'm just amazed at, at, at the transition and how things, how things happened for me personally. When I, when I started paying attention to the right things, my, my life's garden uh, started producing a tremendous amount of fruit. So. Well, look what you invest in. You invest in the kingdom, in the saints that were, you know, trying to do the will of God. Once you set your sails directly in the right path, then you get blessed. In Ezekiel 18, it's very clear, the son is not gonna share in the guilt of the father. And then it talks about this person who had been sinning. And it talks about how he, you know, eats at the mountain shrines and defiles his neighbor's wife. He oppresses the poor and needy. He commits robbery, he does not return what he took in the pledge. He looks to the idols and he does detestable things, okay? So, you know, you've got to find out, hey, what am I doing here? Am I bound down to a pan of brownies? Am I bound down to money? Am I bound down to um, the computer game? All this stuff we talk about every week, but I mean, it's got to hit you every week. Every week you've got to like, go back to what am I doing? And then it goes on to say, you know, will such a man live? He will not because he's done all these detestable things, he will surely be put to death and his blood will be on his own head. Then it goes on to say though, if he turns, but if he turns, then all these blessings will come back. And then it goes back to say, but if a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits sin and does the same detestable things. So you've got a man that's lived righteous all his life, but then he turns, then, then his, you can expect his life to go downhill. Therefore, O house of Israel, I will judge you each one according to his ways, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent, turn away from all of your offenses, then sin will not be your downfall. Rid yourself of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Uh, why will you die, O house of Israel? For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent and live. 
repent and live. And then, and then inside there, it isn't like you're not going to have years of refinement. It's not like you're not going to get refined and go through some suffering and the crucible because God says, I'm going to test you and I'm going to see what's in your heart. Because if you give up, if it gets really hot and you give up and you, you, uh, and you don't want to be tested like that, you know, to, to live forever and you want to go, go home and go, go back to your own ways or get out of it, then hey, that's up to you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get it where it's really fiery hot, and then after that I really know it's in your heart. Then the blessings are coming back in. So I've been through some some very hot testing, and 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 uh, during those times I had to hang on for dear life. And then the next thing I know, the blessings start coming back in. And I've seen some of the tests that that one's gone through, and I must say that you have handled them with incredible grace incredible poise and shown so much incredible intestinal fortitude and strength. Uh, truly admirable how she's handled some of the things that she's been through in her life. And she comes out the backside with with incredible beauty oh. and incredible poise. And it's just an amazing thing. Well, so. I, I give God all the credit. I don't even know to do with all that other than just I praise God and one of my, my, my biggest blessings is you, you know, to have somebody supportive of God and supportive of, of his message is, is beyond, I mean, beyond the blessings of blessings. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. You know, it's, it's the biggest blessing, so it's beautiful. And I, I'm praising God that it works, though. Hang in there. I don't want people to get discouraged, you know. And it's, it's easy to get discouraged. I'm one of those people that, that uh, I have to resort back to back to talking with you about things and, and, and it's, it's easy to get down. And I think that that um, it's just a lot of the people that I know are upset about one thing or the other in their lives. It's a relationship thing or a financial thing or, or something going on um, with their family or something like that. And, and I, I just, uh, these days, I feel like I can speak a little bit from experience and say that if you just hang on, like you're talking about, and go to the go to the source, go to your creator, and bring the word into the family situation or your relationship situation, and certainly the financial situation, there's the light at the end of your tunnel. And you, you can start to feel that, that relief coming, you know. It's beautiful. It's worth it all. It all builds when you get that relationship with God and you get those answered prayers. You have to say in prayer and the Bible opening and going to that Bible and seeing how God's leading you. And then even if it's a tough time, the world's going to put you in unpeaceful situations. And so you've got to cling to God. And But you see, I some fears. If, when you lay down sin, the more you lay down sin, the, the fears go away. They just... They really, really do. I mean, I can remember those years where I was still on the fence with some stuff. And then, you know, I, I had to make that decision to just, and I, I know in your life you think, if I have to lay down this stuff, you know, what a boring life. How am I going to live through this life? How am I going to, how am I going to handle it? There's, I, I've run the food on my life for comfort. I've run to, you know, uh, whatever whatever buzz you've got that's filling up your life. And and that buzz, you've got to understand, is not that it's it's a it's not gonna fill you up. It's only gonna get make you sicker and sicker. So you just finally just say, look, I'm gonna start over, clean the slate. Hey, even if the day feels a little bit empty, God will come back in and fill it up. You gotta have some faith. You gotta have some faith and that will get rid of your fears. You guys are dear to us. We pray for you. Joe and I are praying and we, we pray for everyone because uh, we're all brothers and sisters together. One big family here. Absolutely. So we love you, love you, love you. And thank you for joining us. And uh, we, um, we're praying for your garden of life. We're praying Absolutely. for a, abundance for you too. So We love you and we're praying for you. And we, uh, we will see you soon. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell so you are notified when we have a new video.